In our previous videos, we've seen how to persist data to our MySQL database using a WAM stack with phpMyAdmin. In this video, we're going to see how to retrieve data from that same database using Spring Boot and Spring JPA. Now, one really nice thing is that a lot of the heavy lifting is done for us. We already have something called CRUD repository. And uh, if we take a look at our application, just one we see we have this thing called specimen repository and specimen repository extends CRUD repository. By using a lot of magic of generics, so you'll see we have a gener generic identifier of specimen DTO here. By using a lot of that magic, we automatically get uh, some basic CRUD operations, create, retrieve, update, and delete. So take a look, you'll see that there's a find all method that we're going to get access to and that returns an iterable of type T. Now what's type T? Well, type T is that first generic identifier that we passed in, which if you remember from just a few moments ago, is specimen DTO. So this method already exists and it knows what to return because of that generic identifier. So we just have to call it and we'll call it from our DAO layer. Now there are several layers that we have as is typical in a Java enterprise application. So just a quick reminder of what's going to happen. The database, of course, where we have the data. The CRUD repository is that interface that I was just showing you, which we have extended so we get access to all of these methods that are filled in automatically for us by Spring Boot. Now, how are we going to get to the CRUD repository? Well, we'll have some kind of HTML view that's going to call a controller, part of our model view controller architecture. Controller will call the service, kind of a business logic layer. Service, logic, service is going to call the data access object layer, which is what we typically use for persistence. Then DAO calls this CRUD repository. CRUD repository calls the database. So without further ado, let's get started. No changes required to the specimen repository. That's all we need to do is extend that uh, interface and simply provide those two generic types. That's really it. Let's jump into the DAO and you see the DAO has a save method. So let's make a new method here. We'll say a public and it's going to be an iterable, isn't it? So public iterable and then specimen DTO and we'll simply say fetch all and uh, throws exception. Open curly, close curly. And from here, remember this is our DAO layer. We already have the specimen repository auto wired. So we're simply going to say specimen repository dot, and I believe they call it actually find all. Yeah, find all. And take a look at what that returns. Remember that clever use of generics, look at what that returns. An iterable of specimen DTOs, which is the exact same return type we have from this method. So all we need to do is say return specimen, specimen repository find all. Now we have to make sure that our interface stays in sync. So uh, remember that's easy to do as well though. We can simply right click here, refactor, and then say pull up. And that will take any methods that we want from this class and put it into the interface that this class implements. So let's go ahead and choose fetch all and notice that the type is iSpecimenDAO, which is the proper interface. So I choose finish. And it adds the override annotation to indicate that this is indeed implementing a method from the interface. So that's the DAO. Let's go to specimen service now. And specimen service, uh, we have a fetch plants method. Do we have a fetch specimens method? We do not just yet. So that'll be an easy one to make. So public iterable specimen DTO. Probably see where this is going. Fetch all specimens, open curly, close curly, return specimen DTO, uh, sorry, specimen DAO, which was already populated using the auto wired annotation again. So return specimen DAO dot fetch all. Once again, we're just passing it up. We will need to throw an exception here, put that in our, uh, put that in our handler here on our method signature, throws exception. And just as we've done before, we're going to need to push this up to the uh, interface as well. So right click refactor and pull up. Uh, that is going to break a couple of uh, fetch all specimens. That is going to break a couple of uh, stub classes I generated earlier. I'm not too worried about the stub classes right now, so I'm going to uh, fix those outside of this video. They were stubs we just used in phase one and we used for testing. So already you see we've taken care of the repository, the DAO, and the service. The only thing left is this controller. So let's go to the controller and we might as well give it a new endpoint. So we'll go down maybe towards the bottom 
and we'll say, okay, at request mapping, and boom, like so, and we'll say show specimens, okay, and then public. Uh, let's do a model and view, just like we did up here in search plants. Let's do a model and view here. So uh, public model and view. That allows us to pass back data as well as an, uh, essentially a, a reference to an HTML page. So, so show specimens, open and close like so, and boom. Okay, now all we need to do is say speci whoops, is say specimen service dot fetch all specimens, and we know that's going to return an iterable. Okay, looks like it's upset with us here. Uh, okay, well, okay, uh, easy, just a return type. So once again, we'll steal what we have up above, where we create a new model and view, and we return that model and view. I'll do a little bit of copy and pasting here just to save a bit of time. But uh, model and view set view name and add object. Those are the two things we're going to need to do. So let's go ahead up here and create our model and view and then return model and view just like so. Okay. And what are we going to pass in? Well, first of all, we know this guy here is potentially going to throw an exception, but at this point, we are in the UI layer. We cannot throw the exception any further. So let's go ahead and surround with a try catch. We know a couple things that we want to do is uh, we want to uh, maybe display an issue to the user and we also want to log. So let's say log.error and we'll say unable to retrieve specimens and then E will pass in the exception and then we'll say model and view dot set view and we'll redirect this to an error page. Remember that the catch block is only going to execute if line 152 fails. Uh, one moment. Uh, okay, set, sorry, set view name, just like so. Okay, uh, so we, we, we can use this to our advantage because we see the catch block is going to return the error page if, uh, if an error occurred. But we also know that where my cursor is right now, line 153, that will only execute if line 152 evaluates and executes without an exception happening. happening. So you can kind of think of this as an if block. Uh, and, uh, you know, kind of like an if else block where if everything went well, one line, line 153 happens. If everything failed or something failed, 154 through 159 will happen. Let's have this return a new view that we don't have yet called show specimens. And you can probably figure out where this is going. Uh, additionally, let's go ahead and make a, let's go ahead and make an iterable, iterable specimen DTO. Uh, you know what? We can put this down. I'll tell you what. We can uh, we can put this down in our try block. Makes as much sense to put it there. So iterable specimen DTO all specimens equals specimen service dot fetch all specimens. And now we know that line 154 will only execute if line 153 executes without an error. Uh, same goes for the new line I've just created, line 155. So let's say model and view, and let's say add object. Note that we can give it a name and a value. So we'll say add object. And for this, we'll, we'll pass in a name of all specimens. And we'll pass in the value of the all specimens, whoops, all specimens populated iterable. What is an iterable? Well, it is essentially something we can iterate over. By iterate, we mean loop. Typically, we think of collections like an array list as being an iterable. So at this point, we should be in fairly good shape. We just need one more thing. We need to make this new view called show specimens. And we can do this one fairly quickly as well because we have a similar example that we created earlier. You might remember this thing called plant result. That shows us a list of plants that we fetched from JSON. Let's go ahead and borrow this and I'm simply going to right click and choose copy. And then on templates, I'm going to right click and choose paste. And we'll rename it to match the show specimens endpoint. Show specimens, you see how I've typed that there? Essentially, we want that to look the same thing as what we have here because this set view name is telling us when we return from this method, let's pull up the view called show specimens.html. So now, a few more changes here in show specimens. Uh, I can clean up a few things. I don't need to have this act as a link. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say, we're going to change the iterable type to all specimens. 
Now remember what that is. Let's go back one more time. Just refresh our memory on this one. That is the name we're associating with this iterable called all specimens. So we show the all specimens and then we're going to store this into something called specimen. And now we simply need to show each specimen. So we can do a PTH text and let's go ahead and say specimen. Um, I'm going to remove the A tags at the moment because we're not going to need those just yet. We can always come back in and add them later, but nonetheless, all we want to do is iterate over and show each of our specimens. I saved and restarted and look, there we go. This is one of those things in life where it actually works a lot easier than you think it's going to work. No SQL required. Pull the data right out of the database. While we're here though, let's go ahead and pretty things up just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to change this from a div to a UL. This will just give it a little nicer look and feel in uh, Bootstrap. So we'll change the open and close from a div to a UL. And that means that we also need to change the P to an LI. And we'll go ahead and make that a self-terminating LI. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll say LI class, whoops, LI class equals, and then we'll say list group item, like so. Uh, you know what, we might need to do a little bit of trickiness here. We might need to say, okay, uh, because we're doing a mixture of Spring Boot and Bootstrap, I'm going to go ahead and put the specimen text in a div tag, and we'll terminate that. There we go, that'll work just like so. And then we'll terminate the LI as well. So that'll pretty it up just a little bit more. And let's save and redeploy and take a look at what we get. Okay, looks like it started. Let me go back and refresh. And you see now it's just a little bit better defined. You can see each of these are uh, each of these are separated by a, bit, a, a little line. So, as my friend Bob Ross would say, not my friend, but I would say someone I definitely admire. Uh, let's have some fun. Let's try to add one more and just confirm that we're going to see this in real time. So notice we currently have ten plants, and this is a form I created in a series of older videos. So we'll say latitude. Let's go with uh, fifty-four point two zero. Longitude, we'll go with minus 1.05. Uh, description, we'll call this one flowers. Uh, plant, 103, or 13, uh, sure, 13 will be fine. And we'll call this one, uh, let's say, let's call this one Narcissus, SP, uh, also known as Daffodil. I'm sure I misspelled something in there, but spelling's not my concern. So it looks like it's saved. Let's go back and let's see if it indeed did save. And there we go. Sure enough, we have 11, 5420 minus 105 flowers. Now you might wonder, where did the narcissus go and the daffodil? Well, we have to add that to the two string of our specimen DTO, which is easy to do. Uh, I won't restart. I think we get the idea, uh, but I'll go ahead and add the two string. I'll go to our two string and we see specimen ID, so on and so forth. Uh, I will add plant name plus space plus specimen ID. And you know what? What the heck? Let's go ahead and restart. I know I said I wouldn't, but uh, let's go ahead and do it. So terminate and restart. And started. I love how quickly Spring Boot starts. Simply refresh our view here and take a look. Now it has the plant name as well as the latitude, longitude, plant ID, and whatever description we have. So in what I think, what I consider to be record timing, we were able to read data from a database table without any SQL, just using a little bit of Spring Boot magic and show it on a form. I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.